Welcome to Dance to Heal. I'm your host, Jenny C. Cohen. Join me as I share stories of how dance and movement can bring healing in a way that is safe and tailored to your life. I'm a cancer survivor, mother of two, and an award-winning performer who found that movement was vital to my recovery. I created Dance to Heal Wellness and also authored the best-selling book, Outside in Recovery, Dancing My Way Back to Myself After Breast Cancer. I will bring new techniques to help you on your dance journey and healing path. Are you ready to move? Dance to Heal starts now. Ariana is an acclaimed belly dancer based in Honolulu, Hawaii. Her love for the music of Egypt is evident in the joy she brings to her dance, and audiences love her subtle cinematic style. Her dedication to presenting the dance as appropriately as possible has made her a favorite at client events, restaurants, and festivals. Without further ado, it is my utmost pleasure to introduce to you, Ariana. Aloha. <laughs> Aloha. <laughs> so, you know, you're calling in from the island Oahu. Yes. And uh, how long have you been there? Uh, I've been here since 2015. Uh, there was a, a brief 10-month uh, moment of living in central Washington. But well, roughly... Not almost nine years. Here. That's crazy and so yeah. wonderful. I don't know. I, I have like island envy. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. You get it. Even I have it, and I'm like, oh yeah, I should go to the beach because <laughs> you know, life hap. You're like when you move here, you're like, yeah, I'm gonna go to the beach every day. But then you're like, oh, it's real life. Like four months since I've been to the beach, and that's only like a mile away. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So when you're not dancing, because I know you through the dance community right now, I just wanted to give also our listeners and YouTube watchers a little idea of what you do when you're not in, in the world of dance. What's your, what's your muggle vocation? Oh, my muggle vocation is uh, social media management and virtual assisting. Uh, I've been doing that since 2016, since my kids were born. So I'm also a mother of two and also uh, I guess what you call soccer mom I'm a cool soccer mom <laughs> I know you are you're freaking cool <laughs> yeah, thank you and uh usually that's like downtime and get outside and get the vitamin d because I'm usually inside working um but on the weekends usually we, we do a lot of active stuff we like to go hiking we do go to the beach. We go bike riding. Um, so, yeah, we do. We try to stay active on the weekends. Yes. So yeah. now uh, your, your fraternal twins? Uh, identical. Identical. They just celebrated their seven-year birthday. Yes. So congratulations on your seven years of the mama. I know. Seven years of survival. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I mm-hmm. If you ask me how I do it, I'm going to say, I don't know. I just play a mom that's got it together on TV. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, my twins are 24. And, um, you know, so so audience, Ariana was sharing with me that they didn't know that she had twins until her three-month ultrasound. Mm-hmm. I went through IVF, and I also had twins. And we knew they were there from the very day that they were implanted. The, the whole being pregnant, though, is very similar because mm-hmm. your body goes through all those changes that no one talks about. I mean, I read so many of those pregnancy books. Mm-hmm. They still didn't explain really what's happening in your body, right? Shall we exactly. give them the lowdown? Shall we tell them what really happens to your body yeah. when you're pregnant? <laughs> yeah. Every, uh, you know, like, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to downplay it. It is like a really cool, scary thing to go through. You learn a lot. Um, about your body and you're like how is my stomach not falling off like I want to know <laughs> the, the mechanics because we didn't we didn't have mirrors except in our bathroom which like a medicine cabinet so I had no idea how big I was until someone took my picture at work <laughs> yeah. they're like do you know how big you're I'm like oh <laughs> yeah um but yeah uh my I mean my pregnancy is not like everyone else's it was pretty uneventful uh there was maybe one or two you know, times where I was like, ooh, what's going on? Um, But, you know, they don't tell you, like, you get aches and pains. And 
you definitely slow down and and I, my question was is gaining this much weight okay and it was sometimes I felt like I was really I mean my doctors were great up to a point but I really felt like in the dark about things um my my sister also has she has fraternal twins so she was like a really great uh resource mostly you know, maniacally laughing at me or like, oh, just you wait, you know, <laughs> and she's also a pediatric nurse. So it was nice having that family member who also went through it and then can kind of also um, guide me through like anything, like, is it normal? Even though I had doctors, it was nice having a family member say, oh, yeah. 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 I, yeah. I mean, it, so before we even talk about birth, right? Yeah. The, the shifts in, in center of gravity, Mm -hmm. um the fact that if if i did not have a strong sense of body before i got pregnant mm -hmm. and then literally losing connection over control not that we ever had control but it was the you know it was yeah. the 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 misinformation i had control and then getting pregnant on top of it mm -hmm. and watching your body change and morph in ways i could barely understand yeah Right. And then all mm -hmm. of a sudden there's a picture and my stomach's like 24 inches out and I'm going, mm -hmm. that's me. And it yeah. doesn't even <laughs> feel like you and your feet are swelling and the clothing. Mm -hmm. I did get some really, really cool maternity clothes. I got to say we, we went a little. I still wear them. Right. They're so comfortable. Right. And and so, you know, I, know. <laughs> I, I um, your specialty is working with women who are postpartum. Are there, before we get to that mm -hmm. topic, could we just give someone who might be listening who's pregnant either in the, like the first, second, or third trimester, what's some tips for them to, you know, move and still feel in their bodies? Because, so the caveat is, if you're an athlete who continued to dance or work mm -hmm. out during your pregnancy, where where we don't know about what you can and cannot do. So we're going from a beginner person who happens on this podcast and they're like, oh, I just found out I'm pregnant. And Jenny talks about dancing the heel. What's safe for me? So what are some tidbits, like just one or two pointers for first, second, and third trimester you would recommend, okay. Ariana? Well, like definitely first talk with your doctor about what um, type of exercise may be okay because everybody everyone's first trimester, like I said, and everyone's pregnancy is going to be different. So definitely talk to your doctor uh, throughout every trimester. And then um, with movements, it's really about your, like with me, it was really trial and error. And it was like, yeah, that hurts. Um, like I think of one as the hip twisting where you do it really quick. And I was like, yeah. I, you really have to listen to your body and really stop if something hurts or if you just don't feel comfortable doing it, then I would advise not doing it. And that's really for all trimesters. And you don't, I was stubborn at points. Um, don't be stubborn. Um, like, no, I'm going to do it, but just kind of let your body lead the way and do what you feel comfortable doing and that your doctor says is okay to do. And then it's really like a huge lesson in listening to your body. I think that's like the biggest thing I could say for every trimester because our bodies keep changing through each trimester. So it's really just adapting and being okay that, okay, I can't do this move right now. That's okay. But maybe there's something else I can do besides that. So. Oh, I love that. I love yeah. that. I would love to add to that caveat, you know. Cool. Walking is free. Yep. Walking with a soundtrack is free. Yep. Because as your body weight shifts, your center of gravity shifts, mm -hmm. you want to practice that and get used to the shifts. Mm -hmm. I would definitely continue walking with safety, of course, right? Yeah. If it's very hot out, be aware of it. Mm -hmm. If it's very cold out when you're watching this cold, be aware of your body doing so many different things as it's growing. The baby, zzz, for us it was zzz, but the baby, if you if you have one embryo versus double or triple, mm -hmm. <laughs> be aware of your body's doing multiple functions. Yeah. And, and a lot of people think, oh, I have to get everything done before I have the babies. It's time to slow down. Yes. 
<laughs> yeah, that's the best thing. Like, slow down because when the baby is born, it's just things are just constantly happening and you have to roll with it. So, like, yeah, slow down. Savor. Yeah, savor. Savor being, go- being able to use the restroom by yourself. Savor your meals where you mm-hmm. can sit through it and eat hot food. I don't think anyone sleep. explained that to me. Like, sleep has much has I, I know some people like well I gotta get my degree done I, and I I'm not making any judgments but I'm just saying outside mm-hmm. of that give yourself opportunity to bank up on energy and rest mm-hmm. because yeah. as you're making the babies right it's actually sucking a lot of energy you're not even aware of yeah so please please really make the time to rest and anyone else telling you otherwise we tell them poo, poo to you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, you're making a baby. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's yeah. You. That's great. You say that. You. You really don't become aware of everything that your body is doing, and it's like after childbirth, then you realize, like, wow. Now that it's done, my body's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> we can make faces of what your body's going through. It's like, hmm. Well, it's pregnant. And then as you get big, what, 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 what? Yeah. <laughs> and then when you have birth, ooh. it's like, oh, <laughs> like yeah. real talk, right? Yeah. And, and you know, I, I am a mom. One of my identities is mom. I love my kids. I homeschooled my kids. I raised them. That's They're awesome. still home. I'm a very, very involved mom. And at the same time, like real talk, I kind of wish I had been given the small print. Mm-hmm. before mm-hmm. I got pregnant because you know yeah. it's just right and I we we joked in our family about my husband being the firstborn son mm-hmm. right and he's been neglected for many years because we really had to put the kids at the forefront for so long yeah right and now I'm remembering to role model for them how to do self-care and you yeah know, they're, they're old enough to not to see so Let's do more real talk because once a baby's are born, they never tell us about postpartum, like the real stuff. And, oh, I have a question for you because, yeah. you know, one of the things I really love about you posting in your social media about is um, diastasis recti. Yes. Which is the separation of your abdominals when you're pregnant, right? And I was never told to do exercises, to be aware of it. And then when I, had my babies, never realized I had a four centimeter separation for over 25 years. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know. I'm thinking, I'm just lazy. Why am I getting fat? Why is my stomach expanding? Having no clue that is because I was pregnant with twins and my stomach was out to my knees. Mm -hmm. Yes. So for a lot of our viewers and listeners, I just wanted them, you know, is there anything that they can do during pregnancy that wouldn't endanger the baby? And still have them be in touch with their abdomens as our hormones are spreading them. Yeah. I think um, uh, for me, like, I really wish, like, I I do, I don't know if I can mention her name. Is it okay if I mention? Oh, Nancy yes. Anderson. Yes. Um, Shaharazad recommended her to me. And she has a really great ab workout. And for people with diastasis recti, urinary incontinence, all the awesome stuff that happens to your body going through. I mean, childbirth is a trauma almost to your body. So do like, I would look for a program after consulting your doctor. That is good. uh, I really like that one uh, for anyone who's pregnant because they do say you, you know, as long as your doctor says it's okay, you do want to build up that strength because it can help you move towards healing your body much quicker if you have that base set. So, um, I mean, Kegels, Kegels, I, they're pronounced different ways, I guess. Those are great, but there's a lot of other things we can do because those, that's not the only area of the body that needs to be strengthened. The entire, your entire body needs to be strong in order to help it heal as a whole. So definitely looking for a program that can help you. That's good for uh, people who are pregnant. And then you can also continue it postpartum. Okay. I have a question before we go into the postpartum. So during 
because like, we have multiple births, right? Some some OBGYN will automatically give people an episiotomy. So trigger warning, it's pretty intense what I'm about to explain to you. <laughs> Sometimes when they're afraid that you're going to come to complications, at least that's the rationale that the doctors say we're delivering your baby. They'll make a snip in the area between your delivery opening and your butt. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they make a little snip to make the opening wider and they mm -hmm. did that for me and it was extremely painful for the recovery and then my doctor at the time <laughs> i'm gonna try and keep this pg i made it a little <laughs> tighter literally i made it a little bit tighter so that it'd be okay for you and your husband dude i put two grapefruits through this private middle hole i don't yeah. care like can we just heal it so i'm just explaining to you yeah. normally in in normal childbirth they're afraid it's gonna rip mm -hmm. so they'll make the snip and just be aware that you discuss with your delivery doctors what your options are i didn't even know to ask so they just went in and snipped it because they deliver yeah. my my hospital was a multiple birth um specialist in new york so they okay. automatically do it because they didn't want my stomach my my whole uterus to go into contractions and, mm. and ended up having a C-section. That was the rationale 25 years ago. Because okay. my first baby was delivered naturally. And then they snipped and then pushed out the second baby before I went into contractions again. So there's a medical aspect to it for multiple mm -hmm. births that we have to be aware of. However, why am I going into this long-winded thing is, are there exercises that you can do to avoid that? You know, because... That is, I know that is related in some way to like the urinary incontinence and, mm -hmm. you know, cause you lose like feeling down there after. Yeah. Well, I don't have any, um, I don't know of any exercises that can prevent that because even <clears throat> with a C-section birth, you can still have the urinary incontinence because your bladder has been having this pressure on it for so long. And then when that pressure is gone, your bladder's your bladder's like I don't know what to do anymore. So, <laughs> you know, it's basically what it's doing. I don't know what to do with myself. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, like you know, it's so I I have heard that whether it's a natural or C-section birth, you will have um, the bladder will have some time getting used to not having that pressure. So, um, I think basically any type of like kegel abdominal transverse abdominis um what do i want to call it there's so many words coming in my head right now your your glutes <laughs> your glutes the thighs inner thighs outer thighs hamstrings just like strengthening that as a whole is going to help you get to a recovery point of that all being weakened bingo so yeah. yeah let's talk about that so let's say okay we birthed the baby right and let's talk about that postpartum what's the what let's let's let them know what that first week month is like <laughs> okay for me i mean i'm just i'm just gonna be transparent it was uncontrollable urination and i'm like what is wrong i can't even hold it my doctor was really great, but when I called them and said, after like a week, I can't stop myself from peeing. It's just like, oh, my bladder's like, you got to pee. And it just pushes out. Yeah. They basically said, just do Kegels. It'll get better. And I'm like, I'm never going to stop peeing ever again. This is just my life. And it's just going to, and it wasn't until like, after about two weeks, I didn't do the Kegels, but I, I tried to do them when I could because when you're a parent, you just, there's so much, like you're healing your body is like the last thing on your mind. You got two babies that don't talk. Yeah. Like, how do you figure exactly. what they want? They just exactly. scream and poop. And you're like, well, I'll just wear a pad and I will just pee myself yeah. because I can't hand, I just can't deal with it right now. Yeah. And then like when I saw my PCP and they got me into physical therapy, you know, it's like, well, Kegels are the stepping point, and then there's all this other stuff you have to do to handle it. So it's like your doctor, if they just tell you to do Kegels, you need to find another doctor and get another opinion and try to get physical. Well, they're going to assess you on whether physical therapy is a good route or surgery. So you want to do that because urinating yourself isn't normal. 
It's not. It's not. It's not. And you, sh- you should have control of being able to pee, folks. Listen really carefully, okay? This is yeah. not normal. It's not yeah. something we have to live with after becoming a parent and, like, you know, having baby. Yeah. And once, I mean, I, I mean, just don't, like, beat yourself up about it if, like, in the first year because that is a really, I don't even remember it because yeah. it was just, like, you know, it was just constant. But you do, and once you get that gist of stuff, you do want to start thinking about, okay, I need to heal my body. And you don't have to do it right after six weeks, you know, when the doctor gives you the okay. You can always, there's a lot of things you usually can always heal yourself later on, you know. So, again, I'm not saying push your, your own needs back to the back burner, but you do want to remember, like, okay, like, what are some things I can do to start healing myself so that I can be more present for my kids. Yeah. Make sure you have a support system set up Mm y'all because you need your sleep and, you know, depending on what your partner is doing, my husband was called the hairy mother. So he would leave the house and work from seven to seven. The first month we were able to hire someone Mm -hmm. to come in for 12 hours. We ran out of money after a month because we just didn't have the cash to keep paying them. Mm -hmm. Uh, There was this amazing person named Sunshine Shows from Jamaica. So she came in from seven to seven and she would essentially keep me company so I could breastfeed my twins. And she would do all the house chores, the food, cooking, so that when my husband walked in the door at seven, he got them, he walked in the door at 6.30. So he had 30 minutes to shower, eat his food, and then he was on duty at 7, so I could catch my breath. Yeah. Um, and then after, you know, after after a while, we couldn't afford her anymore. Mm-hmm. And then I had to tackle it, and it was yeah. really overwhelming because, you know, I didn't yet really realize, y'all, and this is truth talk, I don't know if you went through this, I definitely had postpartum depression. Mm-hmm. So I had a hard time actually looking at my babies, in retrospect, thinking back over it, and, and feeling anything towards them. I was just kind of like an automatic pilot trying to just keep them alive because yeah, I was so worried, right? So worried that yeah. they were going to like die in their sleep or um, I was going to be a negligent parent and mm-hmm. were they, I was breastfeeding. Are they getting enough? They were fat. They were huge. But yet people yeah. were asking me, you're breastfeeding. Are they enough? I'm like, they look like dumplings with little arms. Yeah. What do you mean? Are, are they getting are they enough? Getting enough? I, like, I am shriveling away. Why don't you ask yeah. about me? You know, that type of thing. Mm-hmm. So I, I would really ask if you can keep, you know, it, <laughs> there are a lot of horror stories on that. Am I an asshole? You know? Oh, yeah. Read it, right? Yeah. They're like, oh, I just have my baby. My in-laws want to come and expect me to host a party. Okay. Officially, your in-laws are buttholes because yeah. after making a baby, the only people visiting should be the ones asking to clean your house, make you meals, do shopping for you. Yeah. I don't mind being the poo poo head and anyone's mad at me, deal with it. <laughs> Cause mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. not enough talking. Like, new, new moms need all the support. This is where exactly. a village, it takes a village to help a new mom. It is exactly. un, like, this is to be regular knowledge for our mm-hmm. whole world right? Mm -hmm. Not so much in the Western world, you know? However, my point is make sure you have that. And then for the movement part, go back to the walking. Your baby needs to, you know, the the air anyways. Mm -hmm. Granted, uh, uh, with my, I had twins. And then when we had to let go of sunshine, it was however long they slept, that was my walk. So they slept 20 minutes, 20 minute walk. Of course, it was more 10, right? Because it's five minutes to get them out the door in a double stroller walk mm-hmm. they would start to cry i would try and walk faster they would still wake up screaming into the house pop them on the boob <laughs> yay 10 whole minutes you know take give yourself grace right ariana yeah. and then what are some things that's going to physically be changing for them i know you know what if whatever new mom doesn't have time to see a doctor and mm-hmm. get the official diagnosis with the physical therapist other than the online program you recommended what are some things they could try besides sign up for your online classes. I'm about to put that link for them. Um, YouTube uh, again, I think I will say you, YouTube was a great source for me. Um, I was always active, always doing exercises and then knowing what was okay. What and it was really, cause at that time I was really listening to my body and what felt good. So walking, I was walking all the time. 
and I had to take two kids and the dog. So, <laughs> so it was going for walks. That that was like the. I mean, walking is great for anybody, any gender, any age. Walking is awesome. Um, and uh, just, I would just say, walking is like the best thing you can do. And it's something that you can put the kids in a stroller. You could, if you have one, you can put them in a carrier and just go for a walk, uh, even if it's 10 minutes, you know, because every week they say you should get like 150 minutes, I think it is a week. So if you're, I mean, just 10 minutes a day is, if that's all you can do, then that's the best, that's the best. You know, <laughs> don't worry about like, I didn't get my 150 minutes or I didn't do cardio. It's like, um, for me, there's a lot of great 10 minute t- tutorials on YouTube mm-hmm. and I use those. So, uh, cause it's like 10 minutes, just 10 minutes. That's all I got. Even now it's like 10 minutes. I have 10 minutes to do this and I, you know, uh, they're the best things that for me, but definitely walking. No matter yeah. what. And I don't I, do anything. I, it's just walking. Yeah. My only caveat also is add a little soundtrack to the back of it. Cause sometimes, yeah. you know, Podcast. I do love the sounds of nature, but I, I have, I'm much more motivated by a little bit of music in the background. Yeah. Me going. Another thing I would highly recommend is find community. You, mm-hmm. you, it's very lonely as a mom in the beginning. Oh yeah. And you want to make sure you connect up with other moms who are either experienced or going through the same thing as you. Be sure you though, okay, trust your gut, right? Because um, sometimes you can you can connect up with moms that really don't have the same ethics yeah. and mm-hmm. you know values as you. So it's okay to be like, yeah, oh, this isn't going to work out for me. And then kind of ghost them and find some other people. You need to find people that are going to support you. Exactly. You need the community. That's super important. Uh, one thing I do want to like recommend, like check out your parks and rec, uh, your local parks and recreation, tons of free classes. I actually went on there recently and there's a free like walking club and they just meet up and there's like beginner and intermediate. One is one hour long. One is two hours long. And I'm like, that's such a hit. And I actually thought about doing it because like, that would be great to talk to other adults. Yes. And wa- I like walking and I ha- I can bring the dog. And it's nearby. So definitely check if you don't have the money, check out your local parks and recreation because there's tons of free things you can try, even like mommy and me classes. Yes. So it's definitely something to look back for. Absolutely. It was a lifesaver for me to find um, doula class. Um, well, what is it? Oh, shoot. I was a counselor. Oh, why am I spacing? It's a non for profit that helps you breastfeed. Oh, uh, lactation consultant? Yes. La Leche yeah. League. Thank you. Oh, yes. So La Leche League, I went while I was pregnant, and one of the stories that they told was a woman who had had twins, and she put them in one of those, um, um, like U-shaped pillows, and yeah, had them double latch on while she was eating, and even though it was a funny story at the time, I actually ultimately ended up doing that because, um, if you're whether you're bottle feeding or breastfeeding, those babies mm-hmm. eat a lot, and yeah. you still have to supplement yourself to keep up with them no matter mm-hmm. what. And it's super important to do that. And the La Leche League, going to meetings and meeting up with other people helped me feel mm-hmm. as if I wasn't alone. So anytime I had questions, because yeah. I was getting all kinds of infections and things like that. I didn't know what was going on. What, was, what am I doing wrong? And there were always another mom. I was like, no, no, let's try, let me try this. Let's try that, you know. And um, a doula is someone that's super important for you to get in touch with. I would look those up because they're trained to help you latch the baby on if that's something you really want to tackle because mm-hmm. sometimes not for nothing lactation specialists are wonderful and some of them need more training on how to latch yeah mm-hmm. all right um i had yeah. some friends tell me kind of horror stories during covid lockdown people not wanting to come in and yeah. not successful latching on breastfeeding mm-hmm. relationships with their babies so i wish i would wish for you right that it's a choice, not a lack of education or support that yeah. you couldn't breastfeed or chose to, right? So mm-hmm. yeah. uh, we're running out of time, unfortunately. <laughs> I'm going to have to have you come back, boo. Sure. And here's the thing. The biggest thing is that we got into this huge conversation, you all, about this episode is more of an introduction to understanding how in your lifetime we're – we're reinventing and finding a connection with our bodies. The specific yeah. words that I really loved 
we're fostering a better relationship with your body. Mm-hmm. Because, right? Because we have a hard time battling the image of how quickly our our celebrities bounce back on social media. I mean, they have all that money to hire a personal chef, a personal trainer, um, someone to take care of all the other activities besides being a newborn's mother. And mm-hmm. so we want to make sure that the audience understands it's got to be a huge part of grace. Like, give yourself grace yeah. to figure out what works for you. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Yeah, like, try not to... Uh, this is easier said than done. Like, just try not to let those negative thoughts um, that you have about yourself become the prevailing thoughts. Um, like Jenny said, get find support wherever you can find it. Um whether it's lactation consultants or La Liche League, a walking group, a mom's group. Um, and, you know, just just remembering that it's temporary. You can heal your body at any time when you're ready to do so. And um, just try, yeah, and have grace. I mean, your body just, like, produced a human, isn't that <laughs> That's like, right. we're not right. machines, we're, we're organic creatures, and that takes a toll on some people. Uh, some people have more traumatic um, journeys than others, but try, yeah, give yourself grace. You deserve it, and your body's awesome. I mean, it came out the other end, at least. That's, <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. um, so viewer, I'm just going to ask you right now, give yourself a hug, give yourself a big squeeze. And then feel our love and warmth for you coming through because sometimes you're listening in and I need you to know that we know how lonely it can be on the other end of that speaker. You know, there's community out there for you. And uh, remember one thing, has you come to the end of this episode, if you go into the description, there's going to be a link there for you to access some free classes with Ariana. And also, if you ever want to check out my new app that is launching for some free classes so you're feeling less alone, remember one thing too, as we end this wonderful time, we're going to have to have you come back, okay, my dear? Yeah, of course. Remember that as you heal and find yourself and the new you that's emerging, there will be work you may want to contemplate that brings you back to the you that was you before the world got to you. So thank you so much. Until next time, we'll see you. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to Dance to Heal with Jenny C. Cohen. Come back next time to hear stories of recovery through movement and learn more ways that you can move your body. To work with me and continue your journey, visit OutsideInRecovery.com. Are you ready to move?